three. Yes, sir. Uh, so we appreciate the love. You know, I can. I've been thinking about this uh, this coronavirus thing. <laughs> that are they gonna shut down the polls? You know, I mean, on election day. I mean, mm. I, you know, because everything is being canceled everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that crossed my mind because that, you know, it has um, to. I'm serious. In terms of, they canceled the home show. They canceled another thing at McCormick Place this week. So mm -hmm. that's over 150 million dollars in revenue that that's gone. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying they sent a whole bunch of cleaning supplies to to uh to to the schools. Mm -hmm. And and I talked to uh, Willie Wilson, and uh, I said, "How many gloves are you selling now?" <laughs> and he said. We can't get them out of China. <laughs> oh wow! So they don't like that. I think somebody told me all the all the uh, hand cleaner or the mm, hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, and they said if you don't get the one with alcohol in it, you don't have the right one. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, can you imagine that somebody right now is making a fortune on hand sanitizer, on masks, particular? And what else? I mean, I mean, all the cleaning things that now that are going mm -hmm. around the schools, and and Trump just gave eight point three billion dollars for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So so when the crisis <laughs> for, comes out for a vaccine that ain't gonna be ready for a year and a half right, or two years. Right. Right. <laughs> after, and so, after it takes so, out some so people. So some people, uh, we, we cool, Ken. They said commercials in the commercial plan. Right? Okay, cool. Yeah, I so, saw a brother selling uh, hand sanitizer online for eighty dollars, little little ones, instead of two. It's unbelievable <laughs> because uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, something is going on. People are making tons of somebody's making tons of money. No question, and, yes, sir. And the question is, is you know they're producing. Uh, they're saying, well, we don't know. Uh, we don't know uh, how where this thing is going. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we uh, uh, public health agencies are sending out all kind of stuff. I mean, it's confusing all over the world at this point. Uh, presumptive cases, infected people, you know, confirmed cases, uh, containment measures. Um, they they said there's a there's a uh, one of those. Uh, what do you call them? Cruise ships? It's like three of them are like mm -hmm. just stuck. They can't even come off right. of them. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? And, but and, yet China mm -hmm. is stabilized. Right, right. See, they're right. not reporting that. Mm -hmm. right. The source mm -hmm. of the, uh, mm -hmm. the virus. virus is stabilized. Right, right. right. In fact, right. they're working feverishly to bring the entire Chinese industry back online. Right. Uh, Amazon is waiting on $560 billion of merchandise that's stuck in China. In China. And so, so this thing could be the reset, Wally, of the whole economy in terms, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look past what's happening, what they're showing you, mm -hmm. because this thing ain't nothing new. I mean, people die of the flu every year. Mm -hmm. And they say less than 1% of the people that get flu die, normally have some other issues. And they said that this would only add a tenth to that one percent of of the uh, of the uh, flu victims. So, um, so so anyway, they say flu-like symptoms. They say people have to have heart issues, mm -hmm. respiratory issues. So it ain't just right. So you're you talking know, to your elderly, right? The elderly, elderly, even though there have been infants, some young people, young that people, have, infants, and yeah, elderly. but. Uh, but uh, you know, if you, if you if you've been to China, I mean, Chinatown is still empty. Uh, I mean, empty, empty. I mean, so they got people in China sitting in the restaurants in Chinatown. They're just sitting there by themselves. Mm. I mean, the owners are sitting in there, so people ain't taking no chances. And this could be because you know China is working all over the world, particularly 34 of the 54 country states in Africa. This could be a hit on China. I mean, you don't know where this thing is a, is affecting them the most, but it could mm -hmm. be a hit on China. You know what's interesting, back to the observation you just made, brother, mm -hmm. is you, you asked the question, 
are they considering closing the polls? Mm -hmm. And I noticed that yesterday that the governor of California declared a state of emergency. Right, 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 right. However, that was after Super Tuesday. After Super Tuesday. See, mm -hmm. this is how you know that it's really some devilishment going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if it is so traumatic, so great, so overwhelming, mm -hmm. it should affect every aspect of life, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. voting. Correct. Okay, I'm going to ask TC a question. Okay, so, so TC, uh, this thing that I guess they 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 talking about uh, with this this virus. If somebody has a car accident and the police come, so are the police supposed to put on gloves if somebody start cough, coughing? Or I mean, I mean, there's so many scenarios that can play out with this stuff. I mean, well, first, do the police even receive this type this type of training? Well, in regard. Well, what happens, Harold and uh, Congressman to be, and Brother Wally, is when you come up on a crime scene like this, and it would be a crime scene because people might die, right? The first thing they tell you to do after you fill out the report is you fill out a hospitalization report for you and your partner or partners, so that if something happens, they can probably and they die. Their families would get what is called duty disability pay mm. because it's like you know being killed on the job so you're absolutely right this thing has so many legs I agree with brother Wally when people dig deep down what he's saying on the surface it seems like a state of emergency but then this thing has so many legs and could go in all mm -hmm. kind of directions and it can not only just change the economics mm -hmm. it can change the whole dynamics of how we live right now okay nursing home Hospitals. I mean, especially in a nursing home, you get people coughing. They always they got they got hand sanitizer in almost every room in a nursing home. As you walk past, you know, you if you visit anybody in a nursing home, when I went to see Reverend David, I mean, it was hand sanitizer on every door. Right. I mean, right. you know, you know uh, what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, it's deep. It's it's, deep. And so, I want to ask you one more question. See, uh, TC, we're gonna come to Brother Anthony. Two black officers. Allegedly shoot a Hispanic guy on the train. Uh, the guy's at home, so apparently the gunshots wasn't anything to seriously. But FBI is here now. Uh, the acting superintendent, police, dropped the charges against Roman, guy Mr. Roman. And the FBI now is saying, they can charge these two officers with attempted murder. Two black police officers. I mean, I, I've never seen that in terms of white people shooting black people all day long. I've never seen the FBI come in and investigate any shootings in Chicago. So why did they get involved in this one? Well, first of all, Harold, that's a fantastic question. Uh, I talked to some officers retired. You know, let's look at, like Brother Wally said, we were talking earlier when we had these uh, glitches in our system before we came on the air. The crime didn't happen at that, that station on Grand and State. It happened that morning. It happened last month. When you got a person that's got shot in the back over there at UIC and his bag is taken, when you got a person walking through the tunnel between State, state and Wabash, and he's in a shooting and he kills one person and shoots two other people. When you march out these officers in these camouflage uniforms and you thinking that you're going to scare somebody with a gun that goes out there to commit mayhem, then you put officers out there on these air platforms and in these tunnels and then you already hyped up the people in the city that they're having problems and you think these officers are not going to read this, and then they get into a struggle with somebody, they don't know what he got on him. And normally, you know, the how we grew up, and I'll be 70 in August, when the police stopped you, you stopped. Mm -hmm. So he was engaging himself into a reckless behavior, even if they were wrong. 
All he had to do was stop if he was being arrested for crossing between the trains. When you walk it, when you get on the L train, mm -hmm. it says do not tra transfer from, from train to train. So they seen him. So that's called probable cause. They had a reason to stop them. Now these are the laws. This is not my law. Mm -hmm. You know, we all got a thing that some people hate the police, some people like the police, but I'm going to tell you the real truth. There is no victory in death. One thing about that policeman every day, he carries that weapon of death on his side. Mm -hmm. He don't know what you carry. And he's going to go home because every day at roll call, they tell him the most important job you have is going home at night. Now, he's out there struggling with two people that appears, two officers that appear to be out of shape. And the, the male officer is fighting with this gentleman. And the female is trying to help him, but they ain't no win because if the male mm -hmm. officer is saying to himself, if he gets past me, he's going to attack her and take her gun. He might shoot both of them. What, both of us, what did he tell him to do? He said, shoot him. She shot him. Shot him again. Now, let me tell you the crust of this thing. Beck, this dude Beck from Los Angeles, Charlie. who said he's in here temporarily, is making all these statements. But... I didn't see them do that to uh, Jason Van Dyke. Nope. Right. I didn't see them when he right. killed Laquan McDonald. Right. They, they put him, right. you understand, and suspended him and took away his police powers. Right. So you got Beck making all these statements. And now I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you watch and see what I said because I worked the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you these officers go now allow all this t stuff to happen again. They, they're being told by the union, and the union going to say they didn't tell them this in their damn lie. They're going to tell them, stand down. When you see something going on, you see what happened to them. They fought with a guy because he resisted them, and you see what they did. And they black officers. They're going to stress that they're black officers. You thought it just happened for us white officers. And then Beck, who's not going to be there. Because if he was a hell of a superintendent, he wouldn't have been here. He'd still be in Los Angeles. Um, now the FBI, the FBI got so many things. And I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. Today I was with uh, Reverend Hunter over at Rush. We, we were looking at we were looking at our doctors. I knew our new doctors at Rush University and Rush Hospital, Harold. Mm -hmm. And I asked him a question. I said, remember when the FBI took the manager of Burger King before the grand jury? To, to indict those officers who were tampering with the film in Burger King. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that, Harold? Oh, come on. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, but they ain't did nothing about that, right? Exactly. Remember this. But now these two officers, and I'm not saying that they did something right, but I'm not saying they did something wrong. But there is a rule in the, in the, in the police rule book mm -hmm. that says no one has a right to defeat an arrest. Mm -hmm. And whatever force necessary to stop them from defeating this arrest you must do okay all right i'm predicting one thing that we'll come to brother anthony i'm predicting that the next police chief of chicago will be the white lady out of aurora christian zeman hmm. that's what i'm predicting is going to get this job can I make a, yeah, a, another yeah. observation mm -hmm. from another perspective before we hear Brother oh, no, Anthony? Please, Brother mm -hmm. Shell. I'm listening. I'm taking it in. You know, I don't know policing like my big brother. I don't know FOP policy. I'm a student of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of his minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's teaching me prophecy, which kind of overrides some other things. I know that the number one aim of the government of America is to prevent the union between the black and the brown. Now, some of you, you like to mouth off against your brown brother with your silly self. It only manifests your own hatred of your own self. But see, the unity of the black and the brown puts us as the number one power in America overnight. And the enemy knows this. So he's taking this situation to exacerbate tensions between the black and the brown communities. To me, that's what's at the root of this. 
not the incident itself, but the <clears throat> fact that it could be used to pit the black against the brown, I believe, in my humble view, what this is all about. Mm. Well, I kind of believe that uh, stuff I've been reading, uh, one of the things that that there are millions of dollars being spent in newspapers across the country now saying what this coronavirus is and and if you go on the internet and you got a hundred new stories, 99 of them are with the coronavirus. And I think they're putting fear in people. Like, for example, there are cases where people of 80 some years old and they're saying that they were at home when they died. Mm -hmm. And they're, and they're putting those numbers in the coronavirus virus numbers mm -hmm. where doctors are saying that shouldn't go there. But for fear, you know, every day in, Chicago, every day in America, 7,500 people die. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every 12 seconds, somebody in America dies. So if we sit there for a minute, it's going to be, what, five deaths in one minute. And so, so, so to add to fear, they're saying that they're taking those numbers and throwing them in the coronavirus. If you're over 80 years old and they, they find, oh, they died from the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's some of the stories that are coming out. But let's get to. No, uh, no, I mean. Let's get to uh, <laughs> brothers, what, I what you got to do, brother. Uh, I appreciate what y'all are saying. Uh, it all plays a role. If you, uh, if you can uh, maybe get down to Arkansas. What are, what are those boats in Mississippi? Uh, in Biloxi. Biloxi. Mm -hmm. There were 13, uh, they got like 13 gambling boats. And mm -hmm. then that tour down south. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, you might find Danny down there. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where I he goes. I thought you were going to say something yeah. profound. No, no, you might find him down there. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Oh, my, going down there. I don't want people seeing me here, Gamble. But, uh, but brother, uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us how, tell us how we can help you, man. And no, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use the word elder, but y'all brother's not that old. You know, we all young in spirit, but I appreciate uh, everything that you share. Uh, you know, and in part because I listen, I take it in, and I just want to say, you know, I'm, of course, my name is Anthony Clark. You know, the website is voteanthonyclark.com. Running for the seventh congressional district. The vote takes place March 17th. Early voting has started, punch 33. But to me, in my estimation, everything is interconnected when it comes to oppression. Everything is interconnected. So you brothers just talked about the coronavirus. We talked about policing. We talked about the divide between the black and brown community that's purposeful. And I think it's all by design. Because when you look at who these issues impact the most, it's going to be working class people, it's going to be the poor, and if you take that a step further, the majority of working class individuals, particularly in these communities, are black and brown. The majority of the impoverished in the city of Chicago are black and brown. So if they could fear monger, which leads to profit for so many, mm -hmm. because right. you're in fear, mm -hmm. and when you're in fear, you're desperate. Mm -hmm. Your wallet gonna open up mm -hmm. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You're gonna spend whatever you can spend to try to protect and save yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. If they could divide, well, we already know the policing and our communities are divided. It's a us versus them mentality oftentimes. And one thing, you know, TC, you could talk about this. One thing I think about is, and again, I'm not a police officer. I've never served. I care about all human beings. Want everybody to come home safely. But I feel like when you're a police officer, in my estimation, oftentimes you may think your color is blue, but then if you're a black officer and something happens, you quickly find out you're still black. Mm. The way that the FOP responds, the way the overall union and the way your police department responds, I do not feel <laughs> like black officers receive the same type of protection and support that our white officers do. Peace, brother. And in regards to the black and brown divide, you hit it on the head. You hit it on the head. Because when you look at minority populations, minor if they could keep us divided, because there's power in unity. If we could come together as a black and brown people and say, black empowerment, we're not taking anything from that. Whatever y'all need for black empowerment and to invest in black people in the black community, we're going to fight for and give everything that we have while simultaneously saying whatever brown folk need for brown empowerment. And we fight that together within this class struggle 
white folk won't have a chance but, that but, are trying to hold this power. But part of the problem with that is we include them, but they never include us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mm -hmm. can say we want a black and brown coalition, mm -hmm. but I've never heard them say they wanted a black mm -hmm. and brown coalition. I mean, in all the times mm -hmm. I've been around them, right. I mean, I've never heard them say, uh, you know, we, we need y'all mm -hmm. and y'all need us. Um, and, and I think they, they, uh, they kind of see us um, in, a, in a different kind of light. But mm -hmm. you got to give them credit because they, they go to work. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you give them something to do, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. They're going to, they, they don't allow any grocery stores in, in, in their community. Not you go down 26th it. Street, mm -hmm. you know you've been down there. Oh, today. There, there are 1,100 yeah. stores. Between, all, all owned between what, if you go to Western mm -hmm. to to Costner, mm -hmm. on both sides of the street, mm -hmm. 1,100 stores. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, every store that you think you might want something from, or that you think you need, you can go down 26th Street and get it. Mm -hmm. And and, and so stays so in, in that in that in that on that thought, I mean, I respect them for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I respect them because. And then, and then I'll tell you another thing that you may not pay attention to. The reason that they do shop like that, because a lot of them just speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. They don't speak uh, English. Mm -hmm. So if they're not going to go in an English store where they're not understood. Mm -hmm. So they're comfortable going in those stores speaking that one language because they know somebody bilingual is going to be in that store. So when, when you see a lot of them, you very seldom see them in a store mm -hmm. where, they don't, where, where nobody's there. If they're in a store, like if I see them in, in Sam's Club, somebody's going to be able to speak English. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you see a lot of them that don't. But, so they're very comfortable in terms of, and I think they're uncomfortable shopping outside of that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that Pilsen area mm -hmm. if they only speak Spanish. You know, you know, and, and, I, and I hear that. And what I think, and again, I can't speak to it because I've only been around for so long, but I know generationally I feel like it's shifting, you know, because I have two organizations, Pilsen Alliance, uh, actually three, Pilsen Alliance, 25th Ward IPO, but the Zoma Collective, three brown organizations. They know I'm 100% for reparations. They know I'm 100% about black empowerment that I've got behind me and are supporting and are door knocking. Because they see, again, I think they're agreeing with that class struggle mm -hmm. issue. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a change generationally, but we're working on it, you know, yeah, at no, our level. We're working you. on coming together, and uh, I think the younger yeah, generation is yeah, for I, that. I'll tell you another thing that's happening right now. The, 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 the politicians that were with Willie on the reparations, mm -hmm. they're not with Willie. Guess who's with him? The Hispanics. The Hispanic aldermen, Hispanic state reps, are with Willie Wilson, mm -hmm. and the blacks have jumped ship. Right. And have totally left. Right. And so, but they're starting. They just started meeting just a few days ago downstate. See, this is not going to be publicized. But there are things that are happening because, see, what we refuse to acknowledge is what is the will of God. Mm -hmm. We're going to form a strategic alliance. Mm -hmm. You can't blame the Latino. I can't say Hispanic because that's his from Spain. Mm -hmm. No, Latino. You cannot blame them. They were not robbed of their culture, their language. Mm -hmm. They were not. No. We were. Right. Right. So it's only intelligent to stay with your own. Right. Hell, look at it. You don't know who the hell our community is if you just looked at right. the businesses in there. No. <laughs> Shit. We don't, let's, we don't. Let's, let's not oh, get there, this. everybody but us. Right. Everybody we but us. Everybody we talk, but we talk about so that. So we ain't got right. no business to offer nobody. Right. No. And the money don't no. stay in our community at all. The oh, money, brother. The money siphoned out. I agree. If, if we were together, we would be the number one power politically, economically, socially in America, period. No question. And, and no I'll tell question. you another thing, too. I agree. Is that this global thing is getting smaller and smaller. And, and, and I'm seeing white people in rooms don't care what color you are. Mm -hmm. If you got a better That's price, right, and they say, how much you say you can get it for? <laughs> uh, I can get it over here. I can get it over here for a dollar. Yeah. 
And they said, other dude said, too, yes, if he a white boy in the room can't beat the price, they going with the lower price. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, so, so this global thing is getting real small, and it's getting to the point where, where white people are not looking at you and saying they have, the, on, the only reason that I can see white people have no use for us is what S.B. Fuller said himself, because mm -hmm. you got nothing to sell. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in rooms, and I've seen in meetings where, the, matter of fact, I was in a room with a, a couple of uh, weeks ago, Wally, where the, the Chinese in the room couldn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? He was at the house of this CEO who uh, got this large construction company, the CEO brought him to his house and had dinner with him and brought a translator with him mm -hmm. <laughs> and said, I need you to help me get this price in China. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, t he took the dude to his house, mm -hmm. a white CEO that lived in Winneka somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the room, he said, yeah, he said, yeah, he was at my house and, mm -hmm. and the translator came and, and we found out that we can get a better price mm. at such and such, such and such, and 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 then they then the translator was like, okay, uh, how soon can we get it? And and he was like, how soon do you want it? <laughs> and you know, he, and he said, what about the coronavirus? He said, all oh, that on it, that's not going to affect us <laughs> because we're moving it from Indonesia. Mm. Mm -hmm. We've already got it set up in Indonesia, so there's no fear coming out of China. Mm. And so, but but here's a white guy that took this guy to his house. And so, so this thing would now is is based on who can give me the best price oh. profit it's about on profit. the profit margin. It's about profit margin. No and question. so, and, and but the problem with us is we don't have nothing to sell. Hmm. And so, you know, when I listened to Bobby Rush yesterday, put Bloom, Bloomberg up like Bloomberg was some kind of god, mm -mm. and. I mean, it's just sad, man, that, right. and then this boy Biden, who has done so much harm mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. man. Agreed. And, and I don't understand, Wally, how he could do so much harm. And, and these Negroes rescued him. I mean, he won, what, nine states? They, they say. I mean, they, say they rescued this dude. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand for the life of me how, how we could sit here. Here, Joe Biden. Attack Anita Hill. Uh, silence the strong. Yep. Silence, silence uh, the strong. Yep. Yep. Attack Anita Hill. Silence the strong. Remember, sister. attacked her. Yes. Attack while she was on the silence. stand. Yes. Mm. Come on. Yes. Uh, wrote the 1994 crime, crime bill. bill. Allowed the prison to profit industry to come yes. in. The prison. Oh, yeah. They came in through him. Actively against profit. Uh, desegregation uh, of our schools. Uh, 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 voted. For the Iraq War in 2002, was one of those who pushed that war. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, voted to end bankruptcy protection for student loans. Mm -hmm. You know they had they used to have bankruptcy. Oh, now they don't have it because of him. That was him. Uh, back to Trans Pacific Partnership. Uh, didn't d didn't go to bat against the crooked bankers in the in the mortgage crisis. Uh, uh, he, he also, uh, I mean, this, he opposed the fifteen dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. so uh, trying to cut social supported, security. Supported the war on drugs, yeah. yep. and so here's a guy. But I got something even more more dangerous than that, Wally. Uh -oh. and, and you 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 can appreciate this. I'm gonna play it real quick. It's only it's only it's real.